Hello and welcome to this tutorial number 121 in a series of tutorials and programs that attempt to explain TradeStation Easy Language and this tutorial is going to be all about the TradeStation Dictionary uh, class and how to use that and uh, in order to, to demonstrate the dictionary what I've done is created a very very simple show me study as you can see on the screen here and what we're doing each time we find a high pivot with a certain number of right and left strength we're gonna we're putting a point at the high pivot as you can see in the white but what we're also doing is adding that pivot information to a dictionary in fact what we're doing is we're adding the bar number as the key and then the price value of the pivot as the value um, storing that in the dictionary and then each bar at the close of each bar we're saying is the high of a particular bar higher than any pivot stored in the dictionary if it is we're going through the dictionary and deleting those pivots and we're going to do a couple of other things at the end but uh, to start with let me just go through and uh, recreate the program. I've created two programs here, tutorial 121, which is applied to the chart. And I've also created tutorial 121 devel, and that is a blank program. And what we're gonna do is just go through and recreate the program. Now, I know that this is gonna be using the collections namespace because that is where vectors and dictionary and uh, such like are stored, so it's, using elsystem.collections just to get that to start with and we're just going to have two inputs in this program and they're going to be the right strength and the left strength and we're going to be using those in the standard trade station pivot function so right strength and left strength okay and we've got a few variables as I mentioned, we're going to be using the standard trade station pivot function. So we need to declare, in fact, these could be um, integers. We need to declare the, um, the price of the pivot in the function. Just going to use the standard one there, O pivot price one. Also the O pivot bar one. You'll see what I mean by those in a moment. Oh, hang on. So there, those are the variables. We also need to include variables here for the two vectors we're going to be using. We're going to be using a vector called index. We're going to be uh, using or using a vector called values, like so. And we're going to be using the dictionary itself. So let's just, I will be making this program available as usual for a small fee or for free for gold pass members. Okay, high piv dict, and I'm going to call that, or declare that as null to start with. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is some initialization. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do is if you see up here in properties, this is the analysis technique. This is this show me study we're working on at the moment. I'm going to click on here on the events. And we want something to happen on the initialized event. So I'm just going to double click in that place there. And you'll see now that we've got something that's going to take place uh, when the program is initialized. And uh, one thing I'm going to do to start with is I'm just going to clear the print log so that we don't get bogged down with too much information later on if we, uh, if we use that. And we're going to create the vectors now. So we're going to say index equals new vector and similarly for values equals new vector and i piv dict equals new dictionary like so okay so i'm just going to verify that by clicking the little green tick symbol just to make sure we're good so far okay so we are okay so as i mentioned we want to take some action if we get a pivot now i've cheated here i've copied the uh, the, pro the, um, the code that I've already created in the other program just to save some time. We do that using if pivot, and then we've got the standard trade station pivot function here. You can right click there if you want to know more information. And um, the little subtlety though is we're saying is not equal to minus one. That means that this, this 
is true, or rather this is um, equal to minus one if there are no pivots. Um, if there is a pivot though, it's not minus one. And um, so we will say if this is true, in other words, this is not minus one, and the bar status um, of the bar, it's the last tick of the bar. If both those things are true, then we're gonna do a couple of things. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plot a dot on the chart. Now, the thing with this is the pivot is confirmed a number of bars after the pivot. Otherwise, we wouldn't know if it's a pivot or not. So in other words, to, to make sure it's the right bar, we're gonna use right strength. So we're plotting this dot right strength bars ago. And not only that, we wanna plot it at the high, but we wanna plot it at the high of right strength bars ago. So let's just put that there and I've not added any other bells and whistles to the plot statement. And let's say end, I'm just gonna verify this. And let's just check that we're seeing those uh, those dots to start with. Now these are dots from the previous program, so I'm just gonna cl close. In fact, let's just go format, analysis techniques. I'm just gonna change the status of that off. And I'm just gonna change the color of these dots. So let's make it, let's make it yellow just for the sake of doing something, something different. So there you go, you can see that the dot's plotting fine. So we're good with that. Now, the next thing I said we wanna do is we wanna add the information to the dictionary. And we do that. First of all, we need the name of our dictionary, which is high piv dict. Then we put the period symbol, the dot, and we wanna add. So we're gonna choose the add. And then we're going, to we're going to add two things to this. We're going to add the key and we're going to add the value. Now, the key I've already mentioned is the bar number, but we need to do this as a string. So we're going to do num to string and it's the bar number. But as we've already said, the actual bar number of the pivot is right strength ago. So I'm going to copy that again and we can do right strength like so and it's going to say to zero decimal places okay and then the next thing is the value and the value is this o pivot price one that we're seeing here so we can add both of those to the dictionary and again let's verify see if we made any mistakes okay so so far so good now what i said was that at the end of each bar we want to go through this dictionary and delete any entries where the price has gone above the pivot stored in the dictionary so we're going to do that at the end of each bar but we need to just check something else before we start trying to go through the dictionary we need to make sure that the the dictionary has some entries in it and we can easily do that by just using high piv dict, which is the name of our dictionary. And we wanna know the count, or we wanna know that the count is actually greater than zero. And I also said that we wanna do this at the end of the bar, so we're gonna go and bar status one equals two. Then we're gonna say then begin. Now an interesting thing of the dictionary is it's very, very simple to put the keys into uh, a vector and also the values. And we do that just by going um, index. I'm just gonna copy this because we're retyping it over and over. D index equals dict dot, and then that's gonna be the keys like so. And values equals dict and values like so. Now that they're in a vector, we can then just go through the vector. So we can say for value one equals zero. Now remember this is zero based, it's quite important. So it's that count minus one. And uh, I'll show you in a minute that we'll get an error if we forget that minus one. So we're gonna go through each item in the dictionary and we're gonna say if 
high for this bar is greater than value remember this is now in a values vector value one and we need to tell easy language what type it is so if higher is greater than the value in the dictionary then we need to remove it so again the dictionary and we're going to say remove let's just uh, find it here and then we need to put in the number of the index or rather the um, the key which is not a number it's a string so we're going to put in the key and we get that by going back to the index and value one and we need to tell it it's a string like so so we need to close that begin end we need to close this begin end and we need to close this begin end okay so let's verify that see if we've made any mistakes oops okay we've forgotten a square bracket there try it again okay so everything appears to be working okay we're not seeing any difference at the moment if we go back to the, the chart but uh, we'll see some uh, some differences and so forth in a moment okay now just to show you try and ex uh, explain what's actually going on we're going to add some print statements up here near the uh, when we find the pivot now again just copied i was going to paste them and just call these um, 121 devel and 121 devel and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to print to a file and uh, when you're doing this sort of thing with a dictionary or a vector or whatever it's a good idea to print to files because you can generate a, quite a large number of lines of print which may not necessarily fit in the uh, the place underneath the the chart so it's a good idea to do it to a separate file and uh, what we're going to be doing is just putting in the bar number minus the right string and also the number of elements in the array and then for the array we're going to go through the array so this is each time a high pivot is found we're just going to go through the array and print all the values in the array so we're going to be printing the uh, the key and we're also going to be printing the value as well as the number of elements in the array and you can see that we can get that information by we know how many elements it's high piv dict dot dict dot count uh, minus one we're going to go zero to that value and then we can get it by putting a number in the square values like so so i'm just going to verify this and what i'm going to do is go into into the c drive and open the uh, the file that we've just created okay so here's the file and you'll see that uh, we start with one value in the dictionary as you might expect and then we replace that with a, another value obviously the previous one was removed and then you'll see as each as we go by sometimes there are more and sometimes there are less n uh, numbers of key value pairs in the array and as we go down uh, get more analyze more data you can see that we get up to fairly large you now like 18 and I think 30 or so we've got 30 elements in the dictionary but you can see there that uh, the information is changing quite a lot as we go as we go along okay so i just want to do one final thing uh, in the program and that is what i want to do when at the end when this is applied to the uh, the chart i want to go and highlight plot those elements that are currently stored in the dictionary so let's uh, let's have a go at doing that okay so a couple of things we want to do we want this to be on the last bar of the chart and we want to make sure that we've got some elements in our dictionary so we take care of that there now we want to do this thing once we only want to do it once so we're going to say once begin and end and then we need to close the original begin end like so and what we want to do is do a plot 
So we're going to do that. We're going to call it plot two and we need to put that within a loop. So we're going to use the index again. And we're going to say for value, or rather the value one again, value one equals zero, two, minus one, hypervdict dot count minus one. We're going to go begin and so we need to plot uh, historically going back in time. So we're going to do that by saying bar number minus the, the bar number stored as the key. So the first thing we have to do is get the number back from the string. So we're going to say string to num. Then we need to find the key itself, which we know is index value one and as type string like so and close out the square bracket and then what we need to print or rather the value uh, of the the new plot that we're going to do is going to be um, not the index but the values now one thing I've forgotten to do here is I need to make sure that we re um, convert the or we re update we update the index and the values vectors so I'm just going to copy that there and that should take care of that and so as I was saying the values values index or rather value one it's going to give us the value of the key value pair stored in the dictionary but we need to also include as type double so okay so I think that is everything and what I'm going to do is just verify this okay we've got some error okay so it's saying value should be values just so that it picks up that vector okay so what we're doing here is we said we're going on the last bar of the chart we're just doing this once we're going to examine what is in the dictionary and we're going to go through each element in the dictionary and for that element we're going to plot where the plot occurred and what the value was and uh, with the plot statement this the the number included in a square brackets is the number of bars ago and then the number in the uh, the round brackets that's the value we're going to plot okay well this is applied to the chart so let's just go and look and what I'm going to do is format analysis techniques and I'm going to change the color of plot 2 to be green and I'm going to change the style to make it heavier like so okay so you can see at the moment it looks like most of or all of the pivots have been wiped out because this is as, um, as high as the, uh, the pound dollar has been in a while so what we're going to do is just wait for this bar to be closed and um, that will then confirm the pivot here then I'm going to refresh the screen because remember this only occurs when this is first applied to the chart and then we should see that this uh, most recent pivot is um, is highlighted okay so you can see now that the uh, the pivot has been highlighted there and uh, okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refresh screen control R and what we should see when that happens is because this pivot has not been taken out by recent price action you can see here slightly uh, obscured by the top of the chart but you can see that the the, uh, the pivot has been highlighted with an extra plot and that's plot two again you can see it just there in fact if I just uh, zoom in you'll see it perhaps a little more clearly okay well um, as I mentioned there is a downloadable version of this which has uh, some more comments and a few more print statements I hope you might find it useful I hope this tutorial was useful uh, if you're not on our mailing list then please go to markplex.com and join and uh, uh, see you soon